Are solar panels just a waste of money? Is the home green energy revolution just hype? Or is this just another way to get you to part with more money now, with the promise to break even after a few years, or perhaps even make a profit? Are solar companies just trying to take advantage of the high cost of living and high energy prices to make a quick buck from you? Considering a basic system can cost over £8,000, this can be one of the largest investments you can make into your home. In this video, I'll explore these questions and help you decide whether solar energy is a good way forward for you. I've recently had a solar system installed and I'll share my experience all the way from the background reading that I did um, and how I went about finding an installer. I'll split this into three key areas. First of all, why do people install solar panels? Secondly, what are the main parts of a solar system? And thirdly, I'll go through how I found a reputable installer. I'm going to be answering all these from a consumer's viewpoint. I'm not an electrician, I'm not an installer, so you will need to get specific advice for your own personal circumstances from an accredited solar panel installer. More on that as we go through the video. If you find my videos useful, please subscribe to the channel and like the videos as this really helps the videos get out to more people. Okay, so why do people want to install solar panels? Well, I can come, come up with four main reasons. Firstly, I would argue the main reason is money, or should I say to try and save money. Uh, generating your own electricity, not needing to use the electricity supplier, can mean lower energy bills. Over time, the savings add up, and hopefully they can eventually cover the cost of installing the panels. This is getting more significant now, as the UK's electricity cost keeps on increasing. I've just looked at some old bills from 2021, when the price of a kilowatt hour of electricity at peak daytime rates was just 13 pence a unit. Now it can be over 40 pence. Secondly, to reduce the carbon footprint, solar panel is a renewable energy source that produces no emissions. As of 2021, 37% of the UK's energy still comes from fossil fuels. That's gas, coal and oil. Reducing your reliance on fossil fuels does help combat climate change. Um, you can also personally uh, Combine this with the aim of reducing the amount of gas you use at home for heating and cooking. Thirdly, some people use solar panels to become more self-sufficient. In the UK though, it's rare to get an energy outage. Um, I can't remember here in Lancashire having one for years, and even then it only lasted a few hours. But recently the possibility of blackouts caused by the energy crisis was in the news. Thankfully, we didn't get any blackouts. However, solar might be a good option if you live somewhere in the world where the energy supply is unreliable or unavailable, especially if you can combine it with a battery for storage. And finally, fourthly, uh, this is subjective, they can increase the value of your home. However, you'd have to get advice from an estate agent to determine this for your particular property. I remember only a few years ago, it was said that solar panels actually reduced the value of your home. And there were headaches such as leasing of the, your roof space by companies, and you didn't even own the panels yourself. Many new builds nowadays have got solar panels installed as there's, there's some regulations apparently that they have to include energy saving measures. So what are the main parts of a solar system? Um, when you get a quote, it's essential to get a breakdown of the cost of these individually so that you can compare them with quotes from different installers. So in the simplest form, um, the solar system has got three main components. Uh, first of all, it's the solar panels themselves. What they do is capture the sun's energy and convert it into electricity for your home. Uh, there's a few things that I needed to look at when deciding which panels to go for. Before looking at the panels themselves, you must ensure you've got enough roof space. Roofs in the UK should ideally be south facing to get the best results. In addition, they have to be at an ideal tilt angle as well. Solar panels should still generate electricity if your roof is not south facing and your installer should be able to calculate what this should be. For example, a system that's facing east or west is said to yield around 15 to 20% less energy than one that is directly facing south. Um, in addition, the area of usable roof space will also determine how many panels you can install physically uh, and therefore how much potential energy you can generate. Uh, panels have to avoid shadings like trees or the building chimneys, otherwise the amount of electricity you can produce will be significantly reduced. The roof itself has to be in good condition and able to support the weight of the panels. If this is not the case, you may have to repair the roof before installing solar panels. My roof before installing my solar panels had a few cracked slates, but I got these repaired virtually at the same time as the panels went up. As solar panels can last 25 years or more, 
It may be, however, worth replacing a roof nearing the end of its life to avoid having to remove and reinstall the boards in future. You might be able to install the panels at ground level, but I would think about vandalism and theft risks with this. Um, solar panels on domestic roofs are usually considered permitted development in terms of planning. However, check with your installer and your local council, especially if you live in a conservation area or a national park. You must also register with your distribution network operator, DNO for short, if you're planning to install solar at home. Uh, the DNO is the company responsible for bringing electricity to your home. Usually your installer will do this paperwork for you, but they may charge you for doing this. Um, looking at the panels themselves, um, you can look at efficiency. You know, a solar panel's efficiency measures how much sunlight it can convert into electricity. Um, following on from that, higher efficiency panels can generate more electricity in the same space, making them a good option if you've got limited roof space. A good solar panels should have a warranty covering the materials and the panel's performance. Uh, again, this is something that you need to discuss with your installer. Whilst using a high quality solar panel is necessary, the price is also essential. You've got to look for panels that offer a good balance of quality and affordability for your particular situation. Um, you should also choose panels from a reputable manufacturer with a record of producing high quality reliable panels. This data is quite difficult to obtain, but you'll need to do this to ensure that you get a product that's tested and proven to perform well over time. Um, the best person to go to for this information is your installer. Make sure the solar panels you choose are compatible with your solar energy system and other components such as the inverter and batteries. Um, again, installer should help help make sure that that does happen. Looking at my personal situation, uh, my installer recommended panels from a company called JA Solar. Um, they're rated at 545 watts per panel and we've got 10 of them. My roof doesn't have any space for more. So how much solar energy do panels generate in real life day-to-day -day use? Well, here's some screenshots from the app which I use to monitor this. This screenshot is from a hot summer day here in the UK and as you can see we're generating a very impressive 5118 watts of power. Um, I'll, I'm going to be doing more videos over the next few weeks to look at how the performance varies with poor weather, in rain, etc, etc. Unlike um, high streak electronics manufacturers, you might not be familiar with the manufacturers of panels but as I've said before, your installers should be. If you look at how much energy home appliances typically use, microwave is around 1 kilowatt, plasma TV is 350 watts, that's 0.35 kilowatt, an oven is 2.1 kilowatt. If you've got a car charger at home, they normally um, start at around 7 kilowatt, but they might be able to charge with less, less electricity than this. Um, also remember that no component is 100% efficient and there are many factors such as the weather that affect how much electricity you can generate. If there is not enough solar power generated to power what's being used at home, then the system can be set up so it will start to drain the battery, if you've got one, or start drawing in electricity from the grid. Moving on to the second principal component of a solar system is the inverter. Um, the main job of the inverter is to convert the electricity produced by the solar panels into a form that can be used by devices in your home. Without going into a complete physics lesson, the type of electricity solar panels produce is called direct current, DC for short. This is also the type of electricity that's typically stored in batteries. The kind of electricity that the appliances in your house are plugged into is typically what we call alternating current, or AC for short. Um, so the inverter converts the DC solar energy into the AC form, which you can then use at home. The inverter also has a role in exporting any excess energy back to the grid. Something I want to minimize in my personal system, I'll talk about more on that later. The inverter size you need depends on the power requirements of the home appliances or devices you want to run. So to determine the approximate size of the inverter, you should add up the power consumption in watts of all the devices you plan to run simultaneously and choose an inverter with a continuous power rating that is at least equal to the total power consumption. Um, if you start using power more than what the inverter can handle, your system should start using any extra energy from the grid. Also, uh, remember that specific devices like refrigeration, air conditioners and power tools may require a higher starting or surge power than their rated power consumption. 
Um, so to ensure compatibility, you've got to select an inverter that can handle the surge power requirements of your devices. And again, your installer will help you with this. Um, if you also plan to install high power devices at home, such as air conditioning or heat pumps, you should also speak with the engineer that's going to install that uh, refrigeration equipment for some advice. To ensure you have enough power and room for unexpected surges and additional appliances, I would recommend you choose an inverter with a higher power rating that you think you'll currently need. Typical inverter power is around 3.5 to 5 kilowatt for domestic installations. Um, if you use more energy than this from your solar and battery capacity, as I've mentioned previously, your system should start using any additional energy it needs from the grid. Um, as you can see from this illustration now, here's an example of this happening. As you can see, no solar power is being generated and the battery is empty because this is being done in the middle of the night and the battery has been exhausted basically. Um, therefore, the full 1036 watt load on the house is being obtained in full from the grid. Look at my own personal installation. My installer recommended an Alpha Smile S6 inverter with a rated maximum AC power output of 6 kilowatt. Uh, here it is on the uh, Alpha website. He chose this particular inverter based on the information that I might install an air conditioner and a heat pump system in the future. Uh, Alpha also produce a 3.68 and 5 kilowatt inverter. Um, I'll do a, a future video looking at this uh, particular system of mine in more detail. Uh, but please remember, uh, Alpha did not sponsor this video. Final main component of a solar system is the battery. Um, solar panels need a battery to store excess energy produced during the day to ensure a steady supply of electricity. This stored energy can be used when the sun is not shining or when energy demand is higher. Um, during a power outage, a uh, solar system with a battery can provide backup power to essential appliances such as lights, refrigerators and medical equipment, ensuring a continuous power supply. If you look at my system, um, which I've installed, it apparently does have a, a facility where um, should the grid go down, the battery will take over. Um, but in my particular setup, this isn't done automatically. I've got to go downstairs manually and, and flick a switch. The reason for choosing this is that uh, in the UK we really get power outages um, and, and even in the short periods where we have done um, there's usually been some kind of warning. Solar panels operate most efficiently when they receive direct sunlight at their optimum angle. However, sunlight and angle change through the day. Uh, so to ensure maximum efficiency, the battery stores excess energy during peak sunlight hours and using it during low sunlight hours and at night when there's no sunlight basically. A solar system with a battery can actually operate independently of the grid, providing uh, energy independence uh, to homes, especially in remote areas where grid access is limited or unavailable. Charging your battery from the grid is also possible and you can time um, this with off-peak uh, periods for cheaper electricity. For a long time there have been tariffs in the UK that can offer an off-peak period of electricity at a reduced rate. For example, um, um, Economy 7 and Octopus Go. Initially these were aimed at customers with electronic storage heaters, but nowadays they tend to focus on uh, customers with electric vehicles who charge their um, vehicles overnight using cheaper electricity. Regarding the battery chemistry for solar systems, uh, there are various types of these available, each with advantages and disadvantages. Lithium ion batteries are preferred due to their high energy density, long cycle life and low maintenance needs. Selecting a battery with sufficient capacity to meet your energy needs without adding unnecessary cost is crucial. Um, battery capacity you measure in kilowatt hours and it re represents the amount of energy a battery can store, which depends on your energy usage and the size of your solar system. Again, lots of uh, types of batteries are available and even there's even uh, different types of lithium ion batteries. So again, have a chat with this with your installer. Typical install installations that I've come across have a three kilowatt hour battery. Um, you should choose a system that lets you upgrade this battery in the future um, if you feel that this is going to be needed. Um, the actual capacity of battery that you'll need will be worked out by your installer who will usually ask you for copies of your old builds to see the historical usage. Ideally, you'll want a battery capacity that will cover your evening 
and nighttime electricity usage ready to be charged up again when the sun comes up and possibly overnight from the grid if you have access to cheap off-peak electricity. Life cycle of the battery is an essential factor to consider as it indicates the number of charge and discharge cycles the battery can withstand before needing to be replaced. Um, therefore when you select battery chemistry for your solar system uh, it's essential to consider all these factors to ensure you get the best performance and value for your investment. Uh, if you look at my particular install it was recommended that um, um, as I've got an alpha inverter um, it came with an alpha battery. I initially ordered one 8.2 kilowatt battery but on the advice of uh, the uh, air conditioning engineer ended up ordering two making a total of 16.4 kilowatt. Um, remember the maximum amount of electricity a battery stores is less than this and they do not typically discharge down to zero. Um, for example, my battery will stop discharging once it reads 5% of capacity. So if you're working with your installer, you should now have some decisions about the panels that you'll have, the type of inverter you're going to have, and the batteries that you're going to be in, um, ordering for your solar energy system. Um, it is possible, however, to have a system that only has solar panels and an inverter, which solely relies on solar energy during daylight hours. Um, this type of system I've seen installed in an office um, which tends to be closed in, in the evenings and overnight uh, and where electricity tends to be utilised during the day. The other type of system I've, I've seen people install is without solar panels but with the inverter and battery on its own. This system is designed to charge the battery with off-peak electricity and use it during peak hours providing with off-peak rate electricity throughout the day if the battery has enough charge. Okay, so uh, I hope you found this introductory video helpful. I will be creating more videos that delve into this chosen system and provide you with real life costs to determine whether it is cost effective. Um, I'm gonna look at whether, uh, or, or what happens should I say if it's raining. Um, our future videos will look at costings in a lot more detail. Um, for example, is it truly possible to get a zero energy bill uh, if you've got solar panels and a battery what will happen if it's raining thunderstorming etc etc I will have a look at the different tariffs that are available in the UK um, so if you if you enjoy this content and would like more please subscribe to the channel uh, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video uh, any questions or anything that you want me to include next time please leave your comments below thanks everyone